Good evening one and all. Welcome to the class of Construction Technology CE 204. This paper appears in the fourth semester of Civil Engineering BTEC program. We were discussing about the topics from module 6. We discussed about the building failures, the various causes and the various types of building failures in the first session of module 6. Now, we are going to discuss about the failure in RCC structures, the failure in reinforced cement concrete structures. Myself, Chaitra S., Assistant Professor, Department of Civil Engineering, SNIT, Adur. This module carries 20 marks and is considered to be very important. Let us move to the introduction and the questions. We all are engineer and engineering is the closest thing to magic that exists in the world because we create the world as we see around. So in this session we will be discussing about what do you mean by failure in RCC structure and what are the different causes of failure in RCC structure? As we all know, in the country of India, most of the constructions are made in reinforced cement concrete. So, it is very important to understand the failure in RCC structures and what are the different causes. By knowing this only, we can decide what are the preventive measures that can be taken to prevent such failure. Moving on to what is RCC failure? Why is it necessary to learn about RCC failure? As I said in the last slide, durability of RCC structures need to be taken care of and 90% of construction in India is in RCC. So reinforced concrete structures, cement concrete structures usually have a durability or lifespan of nearly 75 to 100 years. So it is necessary that within this lifespan they should be maintained with proper safety, security and durability. Let us see some RCC failures. This is an RCC failure, this one and this one. Moving on to the various causes of failures. As we said, reinforcement and concrete is widely used in construction throughout the country and now we are going to understand the various causes of failures. Faulty design, improper construction techniques employed, corrosion, weathering, overloading, accidental loading, fire or heat, thermal cracking, settlement of foundation, structural alterations. These are the various causes of failures. Moving on to the first one, faulty design. Faulty design includes negligence, lack of sufficient knowledge, overlooking, wrong estimation of loads and the reliance on inaccurate data. Faulty design greatly affects the structural integrity. Wrong interpretation of results result in improper structural design. Improper de detailing results in concentration of stresses and this is a major serviceability problem. So faulty design is an important cause of RCC failure and need to be taken care of. These are examples of concrete damage due to the design faults or faulty design. 
Moving on to the second cause, improper construction techniques employed. Poor workmanship, low quality materials, etc. reduces the overall performance of the concrete structures. Miscommunication between design and construction team may lead to structural failure. Poor workmanship includes over or un under consolidated aggregates, improper location of rebars, over watering for workability etc. These are examples of poor workmanship. As you can see in the figure, these are examples of various improper construction techniques employed for every work there is a particular method of construction and it should be followed without fail to reduce the failure. Moving on to a table, here we can see construction error and the effect of this construction error in RCC structures. First one is inadequate cover to reinforcement. If the cover is not accurate or adequate, Aggressive elements penetrate the member. As a result, reinforcement bars will deteriorate and concrete spalling occurs. Incorrectly made construction joint. If the construction joints are not properly made, path for penetration is opened of moisture into concrete. Next one is the grout leakage. When joints of formwork are not sealed properly, Grout and fine materials would move out of concrete mix leading to porous concrete. If Next one is poor compaction. If the compaction is poor, porous honeycomb concrete is formed. Is, if segregation of concrete mixture occurs, it leads to distortion of concrete textures increasing its porosity. If the curing is poor, required strength is not attained. If high quantity of water is used, it makes the concrete permeable, porous, thus reduces the strength and affects the durability. Next important cause is corrosion. Corrosion of the reinforcing steel causes structural damage. Usually there is a high pH value that is greater than 12.5. It forms an inactive layer of ferric oxide around the reinforcement, protecting it from atmospheric agents. Causes of corrosion are chloride penetration and carbonation. In chloride penetration, it reduces the pH level, thus making the reinforcement more vulnerable to moisture. In carbonation, carbon dioxide and moisture infiltrate the concrete and thus reduces the pH. And finally, the result is spalling. When steel corrodes, the rust expands to 10 times the original volume. Concrete is unable to handle tension forces in concrete. Thus, the portion between the corroded steel and the nearest surface will break, leading to spalling of concrete. Let's see, this is corrosion and this is spalling. Moving on to the next part, that is weathering. As we have seen the weathering in rocks, same way the atmospheric agents induces weathering in concrete structures also, in RCC structures also. So that is an important cause. Damage from freezing and thawing. Alternate wetting and drying, heating and cooling. That is related to weathering. This leads to volume changes. As we know, when an object or a substance is being heated, it expands and when it is cooled, it contracts. Thus, there is a volume change and this induces cracking. Excessive volume changes lead to excessive cracking. Thus, ultimately leading to the failure of the structure. So, it need to be taken care of. Next is overloading. Anything that is overloaded will damage. It is understood from our daily experience. RCC building design is always made with a building code. Thus estimated load 
already we have the estimated loads. The design considers the strength, number, size, shape of concrete cross section, etc. If overloading occurs, that is the load acting in the structure is beyond the estimated load. This usually happens when the purpose of the building is changed. For example, when a residential building is turned into a restaurant, obviously the loading increases. Overloading may be shear, fluxure, tension, fatigue or cyclic loading. Error in construction methodology that is early removal of form work, storage of heavy equipment during the construction stage may lead to overloading. This is a picture of overloading as you can see. The same thing happens with the structure. Next is the case of accidental loading. As in the case of vehicles, same is the case with structures. There may be accidental loading. In case of structures, the source of accidental loading are wind, flood, earthquake, blast. Most of them are naturally occurring calamities. Let's see what happens during an earthquake. Accidental loading are usually short time, one time even like earthquake. They generate stresses higher than the strength of concrete. They results in localized or general failure. This is an example of earthquake load acting on a building. Usually a building is designed for vertical loads that is dead load and live load. While earthquake is acting, it induces certain horizontal load. You can see, thus leading to the building failure. Moving on to the next cause, that is fire or heat. When exposed to fire, concrete loses strength and stiffness. Stiffness, as you may know, it is a resistance to deformation. If it loses stiffness, the structure will deform, leading to the failure. Thermal cycling, that is alternate drying and cooling, alternate heating and cooling, may lead to volume changes and cracking. Concrete loses more strength when being quenched, that is immediate cooling. This, uh, as you can see here, the building is set on fire, usually occurs in case of earthquakes, post-earthquake fires or in case of blasting or short circuit. In such cases, buildings may be subjected to fire or heat beyond the limits. Next is thermal cracking. Concrete expands when heated and contracts when cooled. It depends upon the aggregate type, the cement content, water cement ratio, temperature change, concrete age and relative humidity. In design, special considerations need to be provided to resist thermal cracking. When there is no provision for thermal expansion, concrete will crack. This is the reason why we provide expansion joints and structures. We have studied in detail regarding expansion joints in our fifth module and you might have understood why we provide expansion joints. It minimizes the effects of temperature changes. So, providing expansion joints is very important as far as thermal cracking is considered. Moving on to the next cause that is settlement of foundation. Differential settlement leads to cracking and failure of buildings. You are familiar with settlement from your geotechnical engineering. Foundation design should be done in such a way that to carry building loads without excessive settlement. Uneven load distribution induces uneven stresses. Differential settlement eventually leads to cracking. Uh, as a part of building, settle in two different ways. Obviously, it may lead to cracking. That is all about settlement of foundation. Differential settlement 
foundation design and even load distribution and differential settlement eventually leads to cracking as you can see in this building here the building settles in two different ways and it induced a crack in the building next is the structural alteration these are regarding the various alterations we make in our buildings for example the removal of walls replacement of doors windows etc let's see failure due to major structural alterations example is the removal of walls when walls are removed the columns or load bearing members need to carry additional loads thus leading to the failure of the load carrying member while doing alterations the overall stability of the building should not be affected alteration should be made with a proper consideration regarding the overall stability and symmetry of the building ensuring the entire safety of the building and protecting it from failure these are the different causes of failure in rcc building some of them are faulty design improper construction method adopted thermal cracking fire and heat corrosion etc thus the major reasons for failure in rcc structures is a an important question and it has been asked in various previous year questions Uh, th uh these were not asked separately but you need to know there are only 10 causes you need to know those 10 causes and write at least if it is asked for 8 marks you can write 8 points or 8 causes that you are very confident or sure about and thus you can score maximum marks from this part thank you for listening to the session